गुड मॉर्निंग माई स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ क्लास टेन इन आवर प्रीवियस क्लास वी हैव स्टार्टेड द फोटो सिंथेसिस पर टूडे वील कम्प्लीट द फोटो सिंथेसिस ओके सो इन यूर प्रीवियस क्लास वी न्यू दैट वॉट इज फोटो सिंथेसिस सो आई एम टेलिंग इट अगेन दैट इज फोटो सिंथेसिस इज अ प्रोसेस और फिजियोलॉजिकल प्रोसेस बाई हुईच ग्रीन पार्ट ऑफ द प्लान कंटेनिंग क्लोरोफिल एब्सॉर्ब लाइट एनर्जी एंड converts this light energy into chemical energy and make food with the help of carbon dioxide and water and releases <coughs> oxygen okay so this is the definition of photosynthesis so today we will know about the raw materials of photosynthesis and in your in our previous class we have read that chlorophyll part the main or first raw material of photosynthesis and rest three are carbon dioxide so today we will start with the carbon dioxide carbon dioxide and water and light so today we will start with the raw materials of photosynthesis what are they that is carbon chlorophyll i am writing it again second one carbon dioxide third one water and fourth one light energy okay in our previous class we have discussed about that chlorophyll today we will start with the carbon dioxide so today we will start with the carbon dioxide from where plants getting that carbon dioxide land plants getting that carbon dioxide from that atmosphere or from the air and aquatic plants so it are getting from air so from land plants getting their carbon dioxide from air and these are aquatic plants getting their carbon dioxide which are dissolved in water so how co2 is entered in the leaf co2 is entered inside the leaf with the help of a structure called stomata Okay, what is stomata? Stomata are tiny, tiny pores which are present on the leaf, on both surfaces of the leaves, and number of stomata is more on the lower surface of the leaf. So, how does it look? If we draw the structure of the stomata. this is the structure of stomata and the stomatal pore is covered by a kidney shaped structure is called as guard cells these are called as guard cell and in case of dicot plants it looks like but in monocot plants the guard cells will look like dumbbell set so in dicot plants it is kidney bean set and in monocot plants it is dumbbell set so this is the pore of stomatal pore and it is guarded by two cells which is called as guard cell and beside that the structure is known as epidermal cell epidermal cell epidermal cell and these dots these dots are called as chloroplast where chlorophyll pigment is present and this is the thick inner one okay so stomatal pores are controlled by which cell stomatal pores are controlled by guard cells 
So now opening and closing of stomatal pore depends on the concentration of one ion. So opening and closing of stomatal pore is controlled by K plus ions. So when the stomatal pore will open or when the stomatal pore will be closed, that will be determined by an ion is called as K plus ion. So if influx of K plus ions occurs, influx of K plus ions, that means stomata open. Open stomata. Influx of K plus ion will result into closed stomata. Okay. So more K plus ion inside that gut cell will result into the opening of the stomata because the stomata structure it's like that. Okay. If more amount of stone K plus ions are coming then it will be like that. So the, that is now it is creating a pore. So now this condition is called that structure. This gut cells will be touching due to more amount of water which will be caused by the K plus ions and it was like that and when it is become tarji, it becomes like that. So a pore is created and when efflux, that means K plus ions are moving from this region, so water will be less in that region, so that condition will be flaccid. So stomatal pore will be in closed condition. Okay, so this is opening of closing and stomata is controlled by this way by the help of K plus ions. Okay, so by the this with the help of this pore, the case carbon dioxide will get entered into that leaves and which will help in the photosynthesis. So now carbon dioxide part is completed. Next part is water. How land plants get water with the help of by roots, and how aquatic plants are getting water from surroundings. With the help of water, a Something occurs that is called as photolysis, the splitting of the water molecule in the presence of light. Splitting of water molecule in the presence of light. That means H2O. So next raw material for photosynthesis is water. So land plants are getting water with the help of their roots. They are absorbing the water from the soil with the help of the roots. And aquatic plants are getting the water from the surroundings because they are living inside the water. And with the help of the water something occurs which is termed as photolysis. Photo means light and lysis means breakdown. So, splitting of water molecule in the presence of light is called as photolysis. This is the main reaction or important step of photosynthesis. Okay. And this is the main function of water also. That means water helps in the, uh, in the presence of light. So, okay. So, now it comes that light part. So, the last raw material of us photosynthesis is light. So, we will know about something. Uh, Something about light. Light. 
एनर्जी यूनिट्स ऑफ लाइट दैट आर एब्जर्ट आर कॉल फोटोन ओके सो प्लांट्स एब्जर्ब दैट यूनिट ऑफ लाइट दैट आर एब्जर्ब इट इज कॉल्ड एज फोटोन सो Now I can ask you that why leaves are always showing green in color? Is it that chlorophyll is present? That's why, right. or something else? Yes, something else. It is not the cause that is due to the chlorophyll. It is green in color. Okay, what is happening if it is a leaf? That is the cause. That is chlorophyll reflects the green wavelength, and blue and red color is absorbed. That's why the leaves are always green in color. So chlorophyll is also having role. It helps to reflect the green color, and that red and blue color can be absorbed. But that is why the leaves are always green in color. So next part is that P A R. What is P A R four hundred to seven hundred in? So photosynthetically active radiation. That means that wavelength in which photosynthetically active radiation. That means that wavelength in which photosynthesis may occur. That wavelength is called P A R photosynthetically active radiation, and it is four hundred to seven hundred nanometer. Okay. So this is gives us some knowledge about the. light source of which is a raw material of photosynthesis next we will proceed the steps of the photosynthesis so next is steps of photosynthesis what will be the first step first step is the absorption of light energy okay absorption of light energy and converting it into chemical energy okay so first is absorption of light energy by chlorophyll second conversion of light energy into chemical energy and third reduction of carbon dioxide Carbohydrate. So first, uh, as we know that photosynthesis is having two reactions. That is, first one is light reaction, and second one is dark reaction. In light reaction, you can understand that light is required. That means in the light reaction, photolysis of Water occurs, and which I have described that what is photolysis of water. So by absorbing light energy by chlorophyll, it is excited and convert this light energy into chemical energy and splits water molecule into hydrogen ion and hydroxyl ion. Okay, this is the first step that is by absorbing light energy by chlorophyll, it will be getting excited 
and it will convert its light energy into chemical energy and photolysis of water will occur which will result into formation of hydroxyl ion and hydrogen ion. Okay, so in that right reaction these states can be occur at first and next step is that the H plus ions will be picked up by the reducing agent which is named as NADP is a resulting agent that H plus ions which can be which has been produced in the photolysis world will be picked up by the H plus ion and with NADP reducing agent NADP and it will convert into NADPH okay and that Hydroxyl group will be converted into molecular oxygen. Will be converted into molecular oxygen. After that, another reaction will be occurred, which is called as photophosphorylation. That means from ADP, it will convert into ATP with the help of light and chlorophyll. So it is known as photophosphorylation. These are the main states, main three states of light reaction that means first one is photolysis of water next one is production of reducing agent last one is third one is for production of molecular oxygen and fourth one is photophosphorylation and after that the dark phase will come or the dark reaction that means you will write dark light phase and dark phase. In the dark reaction, that doesn't mean that it will occur only in the absence of in the dark situation. Okay, it means that it is not dependent on the light. We rather say that light phase means light dependent phase and dark phase means light independent phase. These phase can occur in presence of light or in absence of light. It can occur in both. So that's why it is called as dark phase. Don't think that dark phase means it will occur in the dark. It means that it doesn't depend on the light. It can occur in the presence or absence of light. Okay. So during the light phase we have got that NADPH. We have got that NADPH. We have got that ATP. Okay. During the light. Sorry. During the light phase. So with the help of that, the carbon dioxide will be converted into carbohydrate or reduction of that carbon dioxide into carbohydrate will be occur with the help of ATP and NADPH which are produced in the light reaction. Okay, so these are the main steps of photosynthesis. So here I am written in short and you can see then inside the light reaction there are some steps I am repeating photolysis of water, production of reducing agent, production of molecular oxygen and last one photophosphorylation. These are the main four steps of light reaction and with the help in the light reaction that NADPH and ATP is formed and molecular oxygens are also formed in that light reaction which can be released after the process of photosynthesis and in the dark phase reduction of carbon dioxide into glucose is seen. Okay, conversion of and here you can say and release of oxygen and release of oxygen. Okay, so these are the main steps of photosynthesis. Now there are some factors for photosynthesis. The rate of photosynthesis can be dependent on some factors like temperature. If the temperature is near about 0 to 45 degree centigrade, the photosynthesis can occur. But before 0 degree centigrade or more than uh, 45 degree centigrade, photosynthesis will not occur. The most suitable um, temperature is near about 35 degree centigrade. And more CO2 concentration is harmful for plants. In case in the if more concentration of CO2 is higher, then uh, rate of photosynthesis will be decreased. Okay, and if the water content is high, the photo rate of photosynthesis will be high and the light intensity, if the uh, light, they get proper amount of light, the photosynthesis will be proper. Okay, so these are the some factors, which are the factors, light, temperature, CO2 concentration, water, etc. Okay, these are the 
some factors of photosynthesis okay so with that we are we have finished the photosynthesis part next day so that means autotrophic mode of nutrition is completed next day we will proceed for the next step that is heterotrophic mode of nutrition particularly holozoic mode of nutrition okay so thank you